Hey guys, it's Austin here. Tonight, as you can see up here, it's 1.44 a.m. Imagine that. Well, tonight, well, this morning, if I would say that much, we're going to be going over some Bible here. Um, I'm recording off my, my phone, so that's where we're kind of recording. It's kind of weird. I've done some mobile recordings. We're just going to go over here to John chapter King James Version, and just we're going to talk about some verses that mean, have some deep meaning to me. So as you can see right here, it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now if you're not sure what that means, like, in the beginning, he's, talk, he's talking about before anything. The beginning in this sentence literally means the beginning of anything was the Word, and the Word was with God. So, and the word was God. Now we're going to go ahead and skip these verses. We're going to come back to them. And come down to the 14th verse. Now the 14th verse right here says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So from it's saying this, the word was made flesh. So here. In the next few things, it's talking about, especially, we'll, we'll head over to Luke chapter 2. We're going to go to Luke chapter 2, and I'll explain to you what the word was and who became flesh. So we'll come over to chapter 2, verse 1, and we'll find the verse that I want you to, that I want to show you. So um, it talks about here, before we go in, Joseph and Mary, they have to go back to Nazareth because they had to pay a tax. We'll get into that another time. So right here it says, verse 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Saying that, they come, in, they come into this town, and there was no place for them to stay. The hotel was booked full, so they had to go to a barn, you see. And here, going to the next verse, here we'll, we'll go to... um. Verse 9, it says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. They was like, What? What's going on? And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for I behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So we'll go back to go ahead and go back to chapter chapter 1 of the book of John. So the word, guys, is Jesus Christ himself. You see, he was the word. He was with God and he was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, it says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. You see, and the big, biggest things in these next few verses is, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. You see, what we wouldn't get into a Christmas story thing. So... His life shined. And you see, many people hated him, that thing. But at the end of the day, his life is the light. He is the light of the world. You see, and it says that the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness didn't understand it. You see, the darkness is us, guys. We're the sinners, and he is the light. He is the life and the love. And you see, we didn't understand it. So, and still today, people are not understanding it dismissing Jesus as just some hypocrite who didn't know anything we're going to go ahead and go over to the third chapter of the book of John so we'll get into the third chapter verse 1 we'll start with verse 1 so after having said that Jesus was born God came down this is a redemptive this is the redemptive story not just the story it is truth so we'll go ahead and get into the chap third chapter We'll start with verse 3. Well, hmm, let me see what verse 2 says. Yeah, let's start with verse 3. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, so Jesus right here is talking to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was just another high priest. Or not necessarily a high priest, but he was a priest of the Jews. So it says right here, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? 
can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So he's saying, we were born the first time. We can't, it's, he's, he, he's my, his mind is confused because how can a man be born a second time? So I'm, and Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So he's sitting there saying, Guys, if you guys have never met Jesus, he's saying, if you never met me, he's not saying it exactly. He's not coming out and saying, Oh, 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 you met me, you're going to heaven. He's saying, Guys, if you haven't been changed completely from old to new, which means your whole perspective of life is going to change when you meet Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you why here in a second. It says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. It says, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again, and bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but not tell whence it come, and whither it goeth, so every one that is born of the Spirit. So it's saying, you guys can hear the wind, you guys can feel it, but you don't see it coming. You see, you can't see it. Same thing with faith. You know the truth of God. He's there. We know, and I know, but you can't see it. See, the faith is the things of the invisible. Verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? So he answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? Knowest not these things? He says, I'm saying unto you, we speak that know, do know, and testify what we've seen, and ye receive not a witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you didn't believe, how can I tell you things of heaven and expect you to believe? See, verse 12 right there is saying, I told you things about the earth, and you didn't believe me. So why should I tell you things about heaven? You're definitely not going to believe. It says, no man ascended up to heaven. He came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So, those are just some extra verses in there. So, here's the main verses, guys. That believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. But here's the key verse. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. It says, God didn't, God didn't come down to kill the world, but through the world, through him, the world will be saved. You see, it says, he that believes is not condemned. Otherwise, saying, he that believes is not going to be killed. You see, but I'll tell you, I'll explain to you what that means when it says not be condemned or killed in a second, because everybody's going to die, and I'll explain to you. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So when it says when it talks about condemnation here, there's the first death, the first death, and then the second death is when the eternal hell is coming your way. You see, that's the second death. I'm telling you, in the first there's gonna be a judgment day. So everybody's gonna die the first death, but the second death is when you've never believed in God and you knew. You've been told, but you didn't believe. You see, the only justice is hell. So that's the second death, because it says it says right here in the Bible it says you should don't you should, don't need to worry about the people that can kill you. Don't worry about them, like the people with guns and the people that try to kill you. You need to you need to be worried about the person that can kill your soul and your body. You need to respect him, and that is Jesus Christ. You see, I'd be more concerned about the person. That is taking care of my soul, whether I'm going to be thrown in hell or going to be in peace for the rest of my life. So back to 3.16 says, this, this verse goes with everybody, guys. You see, forget Christianity. Everybody's putting a name on Christianity saying it's all these cults. You see, I'm not going to call myself Christian. I'm going to say I'm a follower of Jesus because, you see, Jesus died, rose again on the third day to save me from my sins. You see, that's the true redemption. Now, people like Muslims will say, oh, God can just forgive me. You see, that's not the true story of redemption. You see, there's no redemption without the shedding of blood, guys. You see, that's why thousands of years the Jews sacrificed 
animals to God because they were waiting on this ultimate sacrifice. Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice on the cross so that we don't have to sacrifice those animals anymore. We don't have to worry about shedding animal bloods because it says in the book of Hebrews, and I'll take you there right now. Well, if it's going to let me. So we'll go to Hebrews. Chapter number 10. Now let me find the verse real quick. But here, see right here, it says verse 4. Or let's, let's start from the beginning. This is talking about the law of the Jews. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. It's saying, hey, this law is only foreshadowing the good things that are going to come. So you don't have to work bad stuff. It says, and not the very image of things can those with never with those sacrifices they offered year by year continually to make comers there into perfect. That's saying because in the Levitical sacrificial system they had to make sacrifice they had to set aside time for sacrifices once a year for atonement or the forgiveness of the people's sin. You see, it only worked so often. You see, it says verse two for then would they not have ceased to be offered because they because that that worshipped once purged should have no more conscience of sins but in those sacrifices remembrance again made of sins every year those those sacrifices it says in verse 3 right there is only made so people will remember their sins it says right here for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats or any animal should take away sins wherefore when he cometh into the world Jesus he saith sacrifice and offering would thou wouldest not but a body thou hast prepared for me he's talking to the world you see they prepared him well he prepared a body for himself it says in verse 6 in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure we'll go down a few more verses and it says above when he says sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not neither hast no pleasure within which are offered by law they did it because of the law so they would get forgiveness of sins for here and there, which is like, just if you guys are confused, talking about if you committed this sentence and you had to do this for forgiveness. But here, verse 10 says, Which by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Every priest stand daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, but those sacrifices can't take away sins. See, it's the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You see, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down into our hand of God. So, back to John 3 16. It's, guys, it's simple. Quit making Christianity out to be what it's not, and all the bad things that people say it is, and the bad, the fake Christians that they say they are. It's not like that, guys. It's all love. You see, redemption is key. You see, we make it look so hard. Everybody, I'm not talking about just the Muslims. I'm Muslims. I'm talking about everybody. You see, it's so simple. A, we're, we're sinners, guys. We mess up. We mess up on a daily basis, you see. And that's just like, say the Ten Commandments, man. We mess up. B, we need a way for fixing it. So that was a temporary way for thousands of years until... The ultimate sacrifice came. I'll go ahead and bring up the prophecy made 700 years before Jesus was even born. Isaiah 53. This is key. But, having said that, after the sacrifice is made year by year, this these couple these verses right here were 700 years plus before Jesus was even born. It says right here, he's talking about Jesus now. Surely he he borne our griefs and carried our sorrow, sorrows, and we didn't care. I'm just kind of translating King James for normal English. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions, meaning he was he was wounded. I, there's no other word you can put there. Pierced, for instance, for our transgressions. Now, our transgressions is the nasty things that we messed up you see we we're, we're bad people you see we're not good people nobody's perfect nobody's perfect 
Our society has accepted that. They have said nobody's perfect. But but they go on and say all this other crap that it's okay not to be perfect. It says he was bruised for iniquities. Translating, he was crushed. You see, he was crushed. Not only by in spirit, but in physical. For our iniquities. Those bad, nasty things we did. You see, the punishment of our peace. You see, we were supposed to have that punishment, guys. And I'll explain to you. Of the punishment of our peace was upon Jesus, and by his wounds or by his piercings on his hands and feet, we are healed. You see, what that what that means is, guys, we were about to die. It was it was our fault. You see, we were the ones that should have died the death and went to miserable hell. But I'm telling you tonight, at two o'clock a.m., Jesus Christ jumped in front of you and said, "I'll take the punishment." It's like saying, you murdered somebody, and you went to jail for, for life, and then, right, well, not necessarily for life, but you went to jail, and you were going to have the death sentence, okay, guys? Well, you're in jail. While, while you're in jail, getting ready to face the death sentence, a man says, hey, I'll take the death sentence, let him go. That's what Jesus did for you and for I. You see, it's not about you, and it's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ, you see, because the world was made for him and by him, you see? And he's just showing us his love. And all we're doing as America and the world is pushing it away because we want to be our own selves and want to do whatever we want to do. You see, it's not how it goes, guys. We need to humble ourselves and come to the love and the peace of God. You see, because after Jesus died, he didn't stay dead. He was so much God that he came back to life three days later. And you see, now he's sitting on the right hand of God, as the book of Hebrews says. Now, you can say this book. This Bible is crap and everything. But I'm here to tell you the same thing, but it's not, guys. It's love. You see, would you rather feel hate or would you rather feel love and peace and joy and happiness tonight? I'm telling you, if America does not turn back on their ways and start following the Lord, America is going to fall utterly and desperately, and it's going to it's going to be so pitiful. Nobody would have ever imagined it being that bad. So, guys, I just want you to take into consideration. Just the basis of what I've said, because I could go on. It, right now, it's, it's 17 minutes. I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to in this video, because these videos can't be as long as a person would actually watch them. So, guys, just take into consideration. I'm not asking for any feedback. Just take into consideration of what this word says. And if you guys want to check out more of what this Bible actually says, you can get a Bible pretty much anywhere, anytime. You can look, any, Google it. You can download it if you're on mobile, or you can just find that hardback copy. Either way, guys, you need to seriously look into it. I'll be praying for you guys. I love you guys. And I'll just, I'll see you guys in the next few videos. I'll be making it along the lines of the Bible. So, peace, guys.